Hi everybody, I hope you're having a great day. Thanks again for stopping by my blog. Today's topic, I wanna to talk a little bit more about medication compliance with bipolar disorder. I wanna thank um, a fellow YouTube subscriber that asked a question about medication and asked me to do a video on medication compliance. So I encourage all of you to ask questions, leave comments, and I will do videos on answering those questions for you. So I want to talk a little bit about medication compliance. And when I look back over the last 11 years, I can say that probably me staying on medication has been the most difficult. And there's a lot of reasons why. So I want to start with my experience with medication, why people think they don't need medication, including myself um, in the past, and then tips that I use to help me stay on my medication and make sure that I'm not skipping doses. And I think the biggest thing for me at this point is that I've came to terms with the fact that I need medication. So, you know, if you think about it, if I had diabetes or high cholesterol or asthma, I'd be taking medication. And for whatever reason, we have this programmed in our head that mental illness is not the same as diabetes or any other sort of chronic disease, and it is. So the sooner that we realize that and the sooner that we take ownership that it isn't something we should be ashamed of, the better everyone's going to be. So when I look back, you know, when I was first diagnosed at 19, I left the hospital and I was on medication. I was on an antipsychotic and a mood stabilizer. And that was to bring me back down to earth since I was very manic. So I left the hospital and I, when I look back, I think I stayed on my meds for maybe three months. Then I did like what a lot of people do and I said to myself, I feel good, I don't need medication. And so I stopped. And I just cold, cur cold turkey one day just stopped and thought I could do it all on my own. Well, that did not work because a couple months after that, I went to spring break with my friends. I wasn't on any meds and I became manic. Then I came back from Cancun and then fell into a depression. So you can see kind of the trend here. So, you know, that was just a very like a roller coaster. And, you know, bipolar disorder, just as it is, is a roller coaster. And then when you add not taking medication on top of that, it is just leads you down a very destructive path. So, I think back when I thought I didn't need medication, there was a couple reasons why I didn't want to take it. First, I thought I could do everything on my own and that if I just stayed healthy and went to sleep at normal times, I'd be okay. Second, I started uh, basically just self-medicating with alcohol and drugs because I was trying to get back that manic feeling. So you can imagine that's not a good uh, path to go down. And then third, I missed my creativity. So when you're manic, and those of you out there that are bipolar, I'm sure you would agree with this, you feel awesome. You are on top of the world. You think you could be famous. It's grandiose feeling. Everything is great. And I was very creative. And I was writing poems and journalism articles and just, you know, it just felt awesome, you know, and I missed it. You know, when I was on medication, I was still creative, but just not as creative. And so I thought, well, I'll just test the waters. You know, maybe if I don't stay on my medications, I'll get that manic feeling back. Well, that always backfired because then I would instead, you know, you, I could have fallen into a depression. So that was just not a happy time. You know, it was just very, I was very volatile, um, very, you know, ups and downs, and it just wasn't good for me. So... Probably I would say within the last three to four years is when I really started realizing that I can't do this on my own. I have to be on medication. And I also realize that I still am creative. Um, I'm not manic, which thank God I'm not manic because that's not a good place for me to be either, but I'm stable. You know, I am still creative. I can be creative by doing these videos. I'm still writing and I write in my journal. And so there's other creative outlets for me besides being over the top and being manic. So for me, medication is extremely important. And what I encourage those of you out there that aren't sure if medication is important is to talk to your doctor. Make sure that you're on the right medications. It can take some trial and error that I found out. And then just realize that it, it's, it's okay. You know, like I said earlier, you know, if you had um, diabetes or 
high cholesterol, you'd be taking medication and no one would question you. And it's time that we realize that it's the same thing. We can't help this. We were born this way and it is okay to make take medication to help us feel better. So <clears throat> that's just a little bit about my experiences with medication. I am very proud of the fact that I'm compliant. Um, I, I would say every six months I miss a dose, uh, just one day and I just pick it up the next day. I'm not perfect. Um, I'll never pretend to be perfect, but I try really hard to make sure that I stay consistent. So a couple things that you can do. Uh, one thing that I do is I have this huge pill box and it's made by uh, travel pods. And the cool thing is like, let's say you're going on a trip for a couple days and you don't want to take this huge, this huge container. You can just pop out one of the little pods here and just put it in your purse or put it in your bag and you're ready to go. A couple other tips is just take your medications when you're doing something that you do every day. So keeping your, your pill container by your toothbrush. So then when you go and brush your teeth that you do every morning, you see it and you just take it right away. Um, you know, or taking it at night when you're brushing your teeth or keeping it by your nightstand is another, another good idea too. Um, another cool thing that I found today is a free website, and it's called moodtracker.com. So this is cool for a couple different reasons. You can track your moods on here, which could be helpful when you're talking to your counselor or talking to your psychiatrist, and you can actually set reminders via text. So for me, I set a reminder at 7 a.m. So tomorrow at 7 a.m., I'm going to get a text on my phone saying, take your medication. So that's just another reminder just to make sure that you're getting, you know, kind of uh, uh, reminders and alerts that it's time to take your medication. So um, I hope this was helpful. I think, you know, the moral of the story for me is that I have admitted to myself that I need medication, bottom line. Um, you know, medication, sleep for me, uh, not staying up with, you know, crazy hours and seeing my counselor and psychiatrist, that's the recipe for my success. And, you know, I can do everything and, you know, I can't say 100% that I'm never going to have another episode, but when I'm doing all those things, I'm decreasing my chances. And I think that's all I can do. You know, for me, I'm doing the best that I can and I'm going one day at a time. And if for whatever reason, you know, I do face another episode, I'm going to handle it. And at least I have set up, you know, the right mechanisms to prevent that from happening again. So I hope this helped you guys. I would love your feedback on ways that you stay on your medication. Um, you know, how you remind yourself. And also if there's, you know, any other questions that you have or any other video topics that you would like me to address, uh, please leave a comment and I will do a video on it because I want this website and this blog to be about you guys. And I want to be able to help you uh, get to where you want to be in terms of addressing your uh, bipolar disorder and taking ownership of that too. So uh, thanks again for stopping by. I hope you guys have an awesome week and I will talk to you next weekend. Thank you. Bye.